Hello students, in this section we are going to discuss about the Coulomb's law and we were also going to solve some questions. I told you whenever we have to remove a sign of proportional t, we have to take a constant. So here k it's a constant. k it's a constant, so that means it's having a fixed value. So the k value which is also given here, k is equal to 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9. Newton meter square coulomb power minus 2. Next case we have if a charge of minus 2 micro coulomb is added to both the balls then the force between them. So this is for ball 1 and here this is for ball 2. <laughs> Hello students, in this section we are going to discuss about the Coulomb's law and we were also going to solve some questions. So I hope you all are ready. Coulomb's law says that the force of attraction or repulsion. Everyone we already know about that there are two kinds of charges, positive and negative. If you are bringing two like charges together, you have noticed that they are going to show you the repulsion force. And if you are bringing two unlike charges together, that means one is positive and another one is negative. In that case, we are able to see the attraction force. So the force of attraction or repulsion between two point charges at rest is directly proportional to the product of these charges. Fine. And inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So here in this figure, as you are able to see, we have taken two charges. One is Q1 and another one is Q2. These two charges, Q1 and Q2, right now placed at the rest. And the distance between these two charges is defined by writing small r. So we can write here F, it's the force of attraction or repulsion. F is directly proportional to the product of these two charges. So you can write here F is proportional to Q1 multiply Q2. And it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between these two charges. We can write down this is the equation number 1 and this is the equation number 2. Now when you will combine these two equations, can we write here that F is proportional to Q1 multiply Q2 upon R square. We know that whenever we have to remove the sign of proportionality, we have to take a constant. Now let's see here what we have written here. F is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R square. All right, where K it's a constant of proportionality. Sometimes it is also considered as an electrical constant or electrostatic force constant or we have the another name which is a Coulomb's constant. Fine everyone, I told you whenever we have to remove a sign of proportionality, we have to take a constant. So here k it's a constant. k it's a constant, so that means it's having a fixed value. So the k value which is also given here, k is equal to 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9 newton meter square coulomb power minus 2. Because we can write from here k is equal to f r square upon q1 multiply q2. So this is how we can write down the unit, okay. The unit of force, we know that it is Newton. The unit of distance, it's actually meter. So here we have written R square. So we can write down meter square divided by Q1, it's a charge. Q2, it's a charge. So the unit of charge, the unit of, uh, the SI unit of charge, it's Coulomb. So you can write here Coulomb square. So when you will bring this value in the numerator, you can write here Newton meter square multiply Coulomb power minus 2 and that is why we have written the unit here in SI system. Please remember the value of the Coulomb's constant. It, uh, it's actually equal to 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9. Next we have the definition of 1 Coulomb. 1 Coulomb is that much charge possessed by a point charge. Okay, as I just told you that we told you this formula F is equal to K uh, Q1 Q2 upon R square. Now it is telling us 1 coulomb is that much charge possessed by a point charge which when placed in vacuum at a distance of 1 meter from an equal and similar point charge. So as we can write here this is a charge Q1 and this is a charge Q2. We can write this is 1 coulomb, this is also 1 coulomb and the distance between these two charges we can write here that it is R which is equal to 1 meter. Okay, so the distance of 1 meter from an equal and similar point charge would repel it with the force of 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9 Newton. When you will place the values here, you can write here F is equal to K multiply 1 Coulomb multiply 1 divided by 1 meter square 
we can write here coulomb square or this is a newton so you can write here f is equal to k okay and we know that k is having a fixed value so we can write here 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9 newton so this is the definition of one coulomb so in simple words we can say that one coulomb it's defined by when we are bringing two charges okay and they are having the uh, value which is one coulomb given and when we are going to place them at a distance of one meter in vacuum so they are going to show you the force which will be equal to 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9 newton all right everyone next let's see what we have here we have to solve some question which is based on our formula which we normally discussed here in an uncharged body the ratio of number of protons to uh, number of electrons is p ratio 1 or uh, what is the value of p everyone it is given here it's an uncharged body so when the body is uncharged in that case we know that it's actually neutral so the number of electrons is actually equal to the number of protons so we can write here it is given that this is an uncharged body so that means number of electrons it's actually equal to the number of protons right now here the ratio is given the ratio of number of protons to number of electrons so we can write here ratio of number of protons to number of electrons right it is given p ratio 1 so that means we have to find out the value of p so value of p is equal to 1 all right everyone so this is how we can solve this question now let's move on the next question next we have let f be the electrostatic force between two charged bodies kept some distance apart Fine. If the distance between them is halved, uh, then the force exerted uh, become mf. Find the value of m. It is given here, let f the electrostatic force between two charged bodies. Okay when they kept at a distance r apart we know the formula f is equal to k q1 multiply q2 upon r square like this we can write it okay this is q1 here we have q2 you can write down here this is the distance which is defined by r now to see is that if the distance between them is halved now we can write here now new distance we can write it uh, by writing r dash will become r by 2 okay so this is how we can make the figure one more time q in q2 now the distance it's like okay r by 2 it is the distance so we can place the value f dash is equal to we can write here, uh, then the force exerted to become mf. Okay, it is given new f dash, which will be equal to mf. Fine. We can write here k, q1 multiply q2 upon r by 2 whole square. You can write here 4k, q1 multiply q2 upon r square. We know that k, q1, q2 upon r square, which is actually equal to f okay so 4f you can write now we have to find out the value of m so everyone m is equal to 4 and it's the answer of our question okay so m is equal to 4 this is also a very good question next let's see what we have two balls carrying charges plus 7 micro coulomb and minus 5 micro coulomb attract each other with a force capital f if a charge of uh, minus 2 uh, micro coulomb is added to both the balls, then the force between them will be. So, let's solve here case 1 we will take first. Okay, in case 1, it is given that Q1 is equal to plus 7 micro coulomb. So, you can convert this value. It will be now 7 multiplied 10 to the power minus 6 
coulomb you can write q2 is equal to minus 5 micro coulomb so it will be minus 5 multiplied 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb right it says that it is actually going to show you the attraction force with the force of capital f uh, now f is equal to k q1 q2 upon r square put the values 9 multiply 10 to the power 9 multiply q1 we have 7 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 we know that they are going to show you the traction force so we don't need to write down the plus and minus sign here multiply 5 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 divided by r square so when you will solve it further you will get 315 multiply 10 to the power minus 3 r square okay and if you want you can take the sign also put the sign here so you will get minus 315 multiply 10 to the power minus uh, 3 upon r square write down it's in newton now next case we have if a charge of minus 2 micro coulomb is added to both the balls then the force between them so this is for ball 1 and here this is for ball 2 now let's solve further we will take case second for ball 1 it is already given here that q1 which is equal to plus 7 micro coulomb so what you will do plus 7 micro coulomb minus 2 micro coulomb you will get plus 5 micro coulomb so that means it will be equal to 5 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb right so uh, for ball 2 you can write this is q2 and this is q1 okay now it is given here minus 5 so what you will do minus 5 micro coulomb plus minus 2 micro coulomb so now what you will get you will get minus 7 micro coulomb that means minus 7 multiplied 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb all right everyone now again we will place the values f dash is equal to because this is a new force k q1 multiply q2 upon r square 9 multiplied 10 to the power 9 multiply 5 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 multiply minus 7 multiply 10 to the power minus 6 if you want you can take the uh, take it with the sign and if you don't want it's not required because already it's given they attract so when they going to show you the attraction force somehow obviously they are having the uh, opposite kind of charges upon r square so this is the f dash so f dash is now 315 multiplied 10 to the power minus 3 upon r square you can write the minus sign because as we have written i'm telling you it's not required okay if you will please very good if you didn't no need to worry because in question it's given here attract each other so now can we write f dash is equal to f so now let's see uh, the options so the first option everyone it's the correct answer of our question so now i hope it's clear to you in this section we discuss about the coulomb's law we solve some questions please do practice so that you are able to solve the question which is based on this formula thank you so much